hello guys and welcome to my channel i hope you're having a great day in this video i will be guiding you on how to make this 2x2 honeycomb a scrap and cloth factory but before we jump into the video i want to let you know that i won't be covering cross breeding and gen genetic stuff i will only be covering how to make it a actual scrap factory because cross breeding and talking about genes requires a whole video and if you don't know about this stuff i will be linking a video in the description you can check it out i think this video is very easy and simple to learn how to cross breed and how to get a perfect gene but if you're lazy to do those stuff you just need to keep planting hemp seeds until you get a good four greens for whatever you want to build this in green in green area in desert in maybe snow whatever in the lake or next to the beach or and a river and with that being said let's jump straight into the video first of all we will be talking on what is this 2x2 scrap factory and how does it work first we jump here we have our composter then we have four large planter boxes we have three pumps in here to get salt water and then we have our water purifier to make the salt water good water in here then we have this water purifier transferring the water into the water barrel filling it we have our medium battery for the circuits we have three large solar panels and then we have our automatic circuit that waters the plants 40 seconds every 90 seconds now this is a test I made I will be coming back here to show you the results after 60 or 70 minutes depending on the time and let's put this into actual maths quick maths easy maths and first of all you have four planters every planter requires nine can can have nine plants which is basically 36 plants my gene which is this gene can give 50, 55 cloth per 70 minutes when it's full mature now 55 times 36 plants is ba basically 9, 1980 9, cloth per whenever this matures so 60 70 some genes require 50 some genes take up to 80 minutes or 90 minutes and those cloth can be sold in bandit camp for scrap you can sell 50 cloth for 10 scrap so 1980 divided by 50 you can sell 39 times it's 1980 divided by 50 is basically 39.6 but remove the 0.6 keep the 39 you can th sell 39 times 50 cloth to bandit for 10 scrap so 39 times 10 is 390 scrap per 70 or 80 minutes let's say you play 80 12 hours you spend two harvests cloning you spend two harvests collecting cloth for your own base and you spend two harvests selling them to bandit camp for scrap we're not gonna talk about cloning because i assume you already know that you need to have clones for your planters in case you want to plant more you don't want to run out of clones so two times cloning then two times collecting which is basically 3960 cloth almost 4k then two times selling this to bandit which is 390 times two then we have every two collects 780 scrap now let's put this into actual work on how to build first of all obviously you need to build it next to a water source maybe a lake a river or a sea or next to the sea salt water i will be building this next to the sea because this is the hardest one i don't recommend you build it next uh, using large water catchers because water catchers don't catch that much water i don't know if they will buff it later on but for the time being by the time i upload this video water catchers are not that much effective you need a lot for them so basically you need the water pump first of all you grab the water pump you check where you can place this water pump then you grab your building building plan place three low foundations then two high foundations then two squares and cover them 
with triangular foundations. Close this with walls. If you're building this in the open, you might want to leave this area open or this area open to have a way up if you want to have a shooting floor to defend your hem base. If you're building this inside your compound, you can leave this closed, which we will be doing in this video. After closing this, add wall frames or two walls, then a wall frame in the middle. Add your garage door in here and two shop fronts. Then close your roof. And now you're safe inside. First of all, come to this square, place your tool cupboard and cover it with a reinforced glass window. Then come in here, place a wall frame, then a wall frame on this side, then a wall frame on the right or the left, wherever you want on this side, then a wall frame in here, close this, have the wall facing inwards in here, and then have the wall facing towards you on this side. First, we need to place three water pumps. To place them, you need to jump down, place the first one as far as possible to the left, jump on top of it, place one on the left side, and place one on the right side and you'll have enough space to jump here and fill your water jug manually. Then we need power for those water pumps. Go on your roof, grab three solar panels, place them towards the sun. Now you can do this circuit without a battery, but if you want this working at night as well, you might want a medium battery because a medium battery can do the job. Place the medium battery as I show you in here. So you have the power input and output facing you. Then place the two root combiners above it. Connect the combined, combined power of this one to the power N. Then this root, combine, root power two to the combined power. Grab the first root power and plug it into the solar panel. Then plug the rest. And now, as you can see, the battery is recharging. To power the water pumps to, ch to start pumping water, you need one electrical branch and one splitter. The reason I'm using electrical branches is to split the power perfectly to have enough power at the end of the circuit. First, grab the power output of the battery and plug it, plug it into the power end of the electrical branch. Have 15, 16 power. Since one of every one of those require 5 power, this is 15, and we need 1 power for the splitter. So you need to connect the branch out to the power end of the splitter, then configure the branch to 16. Grab every power output of the splitter and connect it to every water pump you have in here. Now, as you can see, salt water will be, start, will be starting to get filled in here until we connect this to a water purifier to turn it into actual good water to, to fill our plants with. Now you want to place your garage doors, then grab your water purifier and place it like shown, come back place another electrical branch, have the power out connected to the power in, then branch off 5 power, grab the branch out, 
and connect it to the water purifier we have in here then you need fluid combiner this one to connect the water pumps to the water purifier place the fluid combiner in here then grab your water tool connect every water in to every water output in the water pump and if we check the, the black barrel it has nothing in it unless we grab the water out and we plug it into the black barrel now the salt water will start coming in here and it will start getting purified in the blue barrel to store our good water we need a water barrel next to the battery then we, we need a fluid pump and switch which is this one place this under the fluid combiner have another electrical branch then grab the power out into the power in branch out to power then then have the branch out coming into the fluid pump and switch grab your water tool have the water out connect it to the fluid input then have the fluid output connect it to the water in and the water catcher in the water barrel sorry come back here turn this on if it's off and when you come back you'll see that water will start coming into this water barrel now we need to place our planters and our ceiling lights we might want to upgrade the roof to get this perfectly to metal we need four ceiling lights and four water sprinklers place the sprinklers in the middle of your roof the reason i am using four sprinklers is because a sprinkler splits the water into the amount of planters you have one sprinkler won't be enough two sprinklers won't be enough for four planters so i will be using four to get enough water for every planter after placing the sprinklers place your ceiling lights then grab your planter boxes you need to use large planter boxes because it's cheaper place this then place one behind it then come back in here rotate the planter place one as far as you can to the left then you'll have enough space to fit one oops I lied because I didn't place this perfectly And now we need to connect the ceiling lights and the sprinklers for them to work. For this, we need one more electrical branch. Place this above the splitter so you can have easy access for it later on. Grab the power out of this electrical branch, connect it to the power in, then have the branch out 8 because every ceiling light requires 2 power and we will need 8 power for 4 ceiling lights come back and connect the first ceiling light then grab the pass through connect it to the power in and so now that our lights are working we need our sprinklers to be working as well for this we need one fluid pump place it here then grab the branch out the power out connect it to the pump power you grab your water tool have the water out connect it to the fluid input and the fluid output connect it to the sprinklers and now when we come back here and turn this on our sprinklers will start working 
to have this circuit working automatically you need to remove this then place three more electrical branches and one blocker and two timers now this is the part of the video where you either quit or you either stay because you're lazy to farm i will keep this as simple as i can please bear with me because it's very hard to explain but i won't be going into details i will be only showing you how to connect this circuit first of all come to this electrical branch connected to the power in of this electrical branch have eight power branched off then grab the branch out connect it to this electrical branch then get the branch out connect it to the electric input of this of this timer set this to 90 and then grab the power out connect it to the power in of the blocker grab the output of the timer connect it to the block pass through of the blocker when we activate this it will count 90 seconds but we need this to turn the pump switch and switch fluid pump and switch for 40 seconds for this we need to grab the toggle on connect it to the branch out then we need to grab the power out connect it to the toggle on of this timer grab the power out connect it to the electric input of this timer set this to 40 then grab the power output plug it into the power in then and only then place a fluid switch and pump grab the output connect it to the toggle now every time this gets toggled it will toggle the pump it will turn it on and when we connect it it will turn our splitters sprinklers for 40 seconds grab your water tool connect the water out into the fluid input then grab the fluid output and start connecting it to your splitters if you haven't already to put this into actual test activate this and the sprinklers will turn on sometimes this won't work for some stupid reason but to fix this grab the output connect it to the power pump power and then keep this turned on and the sprinklers will start working until the 40 seconds run out now after this hit 90 90 seconds it will toggle back the timer and it will turn on the sprinklers to check the battery it's 7 minutes 10 seconds now after 40 seconds this will go up to 9 minutes and 10 seconds and it will keep charging and as you can see the active usage is 48 the maximum output is 50 now when we place our clones after finding the perfect clone I will be placing one planter here to put it into actual test so first we have 4% water when this gets turned on it will water more so this will increase and the health will will slowly increase but the ground is the height of the foundations from the actual ground to have this 100 oops to have this 100 you need fertilizers when you put the fertilizers it will instantly take the fertilizers needed so you just place nine then you move it and you won't need any more fertilizers as you can see in here if i plant it again i plant three then i place three fertilizers they will be gone when i add more it won't take but when i add another plant it will consume the fertilizer i already have and that's it for the build i will go start editing the video and i will come back later when that farm is ready to be collected and i will show you the results in front of you 
and on to the final test here my plants fully grown this stage which is ripe is basically when your plant is fully grown after the ripe the plant dies if you don't harvest it in time and as you can see I have zero cloth in my inventory And if you do some quick calculations, off of 2052, you can easily get 410 scrap at Bandit. And you can leave like two scrap for you. Maybe give it to a naked or whatever. And that's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, leave a comment. And let me know if you want to have bigger and defendable designs for the hemp bases. And if you liked the video, please leave a like, hit the subscribe to help me out and to get notified whenever you, I upload a video. And thank you so much for watching and if you made it to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one.